So there was a terrorist attack in Reading a little while back, um, and I just wanted to describe Reading because I, I happen to live there, so I, I've got a unique interest yeah. in this. And I just want to show you some images I took around Reading. So for, any, for anyone who doesn't know, Reading's a city in uh, England. Town. Is biggest, it, only, is it only a town? town? I yeah. thought it was a city. Right, it's okay. Town so in England. How many people in it? Like 250,000, but for England, it should be a city, but we don't have a cathedral. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, same as Swindon. Swindon's got 250,000, and we don't have a cathedral yeah. either. But, um, but it's it's about 20 minutes outside of London. Um, it used to be really okay. Yeah, uh, from everyone I meet living there, it used to be an amazing place to live. And I just, after living there for, for two years, I don't think it is. Personally. Then it was enriched, really, wasn't it? Or, or just maybe it's the center. Maybe the outsides are much better because they're much richer. Yeah. But anyway, so just going around, it's a very progressive place. You can see here is an image of the uh, walkway. You go down there to go to the train station every day. Yeah. We we pay for that getting repaved every year. Right. Uh, the next one, if you can get up. This is just some of the like construction areas around. You can see the intersectionality. Written there. Will you be my sister? What can we become? Yeah. So you get like woke propaganda even yeah. on the construction boards. Right. You can get the next one. This is just leftist propaganda you find pretty much everywhere. I think there's two of these. Corbyn propaganda for yeah. the many, not the few yet. Ho, 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 no bojo. Yeah. Next one. Uh, the, we even have our own anti cells because of, of course we do. So this is Berkshire anti fascists and they're retweeting Kobani House there. We'll go into Kobani House in a minute. But they've taken some conservative signs, people trying to pro uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, a Brexit party and just destroyed them because of, of course they have. Uh, next one. This is Kobani House. This is what the Antifa guys are referring to. They you can see the Rojava them. solidarity in the window there. Yeah, they're, they're Antifa guys who have solidarity with the Kurdish Workers' Party because of course they do and the communist yeah. Kurds. Yeah. Uh, they took over this pub. It was not being used so they decided that belongs to us because of course you would. If you can get the next one. That's the window there. Uh, Reading to Rojava. Uh, how do you say it? Rojava, anti far mm -hmm. solidarity. You can see, say no to Trump, say no to NATO. Why do the police not arrest these people for yeah. breaking and entering? They gave an interview to the local press. Uh, I told the council about it. No one's done anything because this yeah. is just accepted. It's a Labour run stronghold area. We ran a candidate even in the last election where the Conservatives won everywhere. We, mm -hmm. didn't, we, we didn't win a bit here because right. it's just that bad. You can get the next one. You can see Bella Chow, anti far symbol at the top there. Yep. Next one. <clears throat> these are some of the stickers they have going around. Next one. And then this is the Black Lives Matter protest I went on to document. This was in Reading. It was quite large. I didn't expect it to be as large as it was. And you can see that the Reading Refugee Support Group mm -hmm. who are there. And that's notable because the terrorist in this incident was a refugee who was occupying in Reading. So we can get the next one. Right. This is what they protested down to. This is a mural. We pay a great expense to keep sorry. up up to date. A Malcolm yep. X quote. Until the black Oh sorry. So this this we I can't show the full thing so I don't have time, but it's like um, a black face looking like a pharaoh next to the pyramids is the first image. And then you have more images down the line of like the history of black people. But of course, it's all Americanized. And the pyramids part is a meme. I don't know anything about the that. pineal gland. Uh, I don't think there is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the last bit here. And I found it particularly uh, egregious if you want to read that. Go back. Sorry. Uh until the black race uses its own talent, takes pride in its own history and expresses its own culture, affirms its own statehood, it can never fulfill itself. Malcolm X. Yeah. Uh, a man at one point was advocating a two-state solution. To... Yeah, yeah, he's a terrorist. Um, yeah. But do, do, doesn't... don't what What's Africa, then, in his mind? Doesn't... Not what, real black, I guess? I mean, this, this seems like the ideology of, like, Killmonger from Black Panther. Is he saying that all black people have to be in a single Reich? Yes, that was actually his opinion at one point. Right, okay. I mean, that's literally Hitler's opinion of all the Germans. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. But yeah. also an American. So why do we... You know, I pay for that. That's that's my tax oh, money. Yeah, yeah. I think we spent like 200000 or something ridiculous to, Wonderful. to redo it this year. It's very, very progressive. Yeah, and then the next one. So they, they went from there, and then we marched to the park here. And you can see the Workers of the World. Um, anti for action, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so leftists. Uh, very leftist, very Black Lives Matter organization. This one was actually peaceful, so that's that's right, one thing. Okay. But you know, clap clap. But this this part. Well, well, but before we go on, I can't help but notice that this doesn't look very diverse. Um, no, considering Reading's demographics, it wasn't as diverse as you'd expect. Well, I'm, I'm I'm seeing lots of white people. Yes. Okay. I don't know what my allowed to comment on that, so I'm just going to leave yep. that there. Leave that but this, this park is the park in which the terrorist attack took place. And yep. there were, I also wanted to mention the BLM here, because if we go to the next one, this is a Guardian article reporting on the Times, if we can get that up. So this was the reporting after the, the incident had taken place. And as you can see there, three people killed in uh, this 
instance and they were referring it to a murder or something like that at the time because it wasn't quite clear what had gone on. Yep. Uh, the police gave a statement saying it's not currently being treated as a terrorism incident, but they were obviously lying to the press because several hours after the stabbing, police raided blocks of flats in towns. Photos from the scene show that the raid consisted of counter-terrorism specialists. Firearms officers were also present. Well, why did you need a counter-terrorism specialist if it's... Yeah, it just lies. So it was a terrorist incident. They knew yeah. it was. Um, suggestions it was linked to Black Lives Matter protests that took place in the park earlier on Sunday were dismissed by the police. Organisers said the peaceful protest ended two hours before the incident. So that was one I went on, and then a couple of weeks later there was another one, and that's where the stabbing yeah. took place. But it's in the same day? The same route. Right, yeah. No, no, not the same day. Oh, was, oh right. So okay. there's two different protests. Right, right, okay. I wasn't there for the day of the stabbing. But was the stabbing on the same day as one of the Black Lives Matter protests? Yes, they held right. another one that I didn't yeah, attend yeah. a couple of weeks later. Yeah. <clears throat> so... The uh, National Police Chief Council urged people to avoid speculating about the attack or sharing video or images of it. Wow, you've had too much to think. Yeah, this is something I very much disagree with personally, and I, I think if I can ever have an opinion on what journalistic stuff should be, yeah. reality is more important than someone's feelings. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, put a warning, say that it's you know not suitable yeah. for viewing, but it, I'm not in agreement with the police. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so let's talk about the victims. So the victims of this attack, there were five in total. So three of them were killed, two of them were wounded. And a statement from one other guy who was a victim, but he wasn't harmed. He ran to run away, um, saying that the attacker was so quick after he managed to stab the third person, he started charging towards me and my mate. He shouted, Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest. Which I don't know why he shouted, because I'm pretty sure Allah would not be proud of what he did. Oh, well, I mean, the, the Quranic expert yeah, that he happened to be chasing down in the park has got some thoughts on what Allah thinks about violence yeah, okay Chuck, yeah. i have no information if he's muslim or not either way he, he doesn't clearly doesn't understand the quran so i'm just but, gonna leave but like, well, I, i'm pretty sure a lot would not be pre shut up you you this guy's trying to stab you you know nothing about theology the I'm hell sorry. is wrong with you so the three guys who died one of them was a teacher one of them was a chemical worker and one of them was an american working for a pharmaceutical company and the men who were all gay uh were known to frequently visit a pub which is literally like two minutes around the corner which is apparently known for being a home for LGBT people, is how the... Okay, uh, so the, yeah, gay pubs. So, right. the thing here is, is that obviously because he's a, an Islamic inspired terrorist, the question is, did he attack them because they were gay? Did he know? The, the chances of it seem to be that he was let out not long enough to know if these guys were gay or not. It's just, from an um, Islamic bigoted perspective, he got lucky, let's say, that he managed to run into some gay people because he'd hate them. Like, we know he would Obviously, hate them. yeah, yeah. But, okay, so when you say let out, what does that mean? So, we... We'll get into that because he was... The, the first question I want to get to is, is how, how on earth did he even get here? Because right, this person okay. is obviously off the rails mental. Yeah. Um, so he came here as a refugee, as I mentioned. So he came here from Libya. So Libya went into a civil war and yep. then he applied uh, to come to the UK. I don't know if he travelled through an illegal route or if he flew here and then did it. It doesn't say. I haven't been able to find the information. Sorry. So he came here as a teenager. And it says, whilst applying for asylum... He told the Home Office officials he had been an Islamist militant growing up. Oh, sorry. He had been the Islamist mili with the Islamist militant group Ashar al Sharia, sorry, uh, which would later be banned in the UK as a terrorist organization. Wasn't at the time, which yeah. I don't know why. But I mean, they're just like, right, so you were with this Islamist militant group. I mean, it's technically not illegal. Yeah, so he, he lied to them and claimed that he had not fought his, himself and saying, I did not shoot or use any weapons. I just helped them, plus guarded some hospitals. What were you guarding the hospital with? Then, why are you allowing that kind of person in? It's like, yeah, okay, well, he didn't actually kill anyone. So, yeah, but he is aiding a terror organization. We don't want that person in this country. The complication is officially it wasn't a terrorist organization. But even so, my opinion and probably your opinion is don't care. Yeah, don't, Not don't worth uh, side on, err on the side of caution. Yeah. Too bad. Perfectly reasonable thing to do. Was not done in uh, 2012. Yep. So, that's, yep. that's that. Um, he then said that he also refused to torture people and said that a fatwa had been subsequently issued against him for not wanting to torture people. I, I <laughs> don't believe him. I think he's just yeah. a liar. Yeah, it doesn't sound true. So if we can get the next image up... You can which, what's the imam who issued the fatwa? Like, let's trace this down. No, I'm, I'm joking. Obviously, it's nonsense. Yeah, like, where's the proof? So if you yeah. get the next one up, John. So that's the image of the BBC article. They found this on his phone later on. Um... Yeah, uh, he's a liar. He's just an out-and-out -out liar. We're not, we're not yeah. going to take this guy seriously. So between 2013, so he arrived in 2012, and it says between 2013 and 2020, he committed many crimes. Wonderful. I'm glad we gave you asylum and loads of money. Yeah. Like, this was totally worth it. So the list of crimes include theft, 
multiple assaults on police officers and emergency workers, racially aggravated harassment, possessing knives, and causing suffering to animals. What a, what a great guy. I'm so glad he's here. Yeah. He's making the country a better place. What about the restaurant that I assumed he opened? What about the <laughs> ethnic food that he brought here? I bet Libyan food is nice. I have no idea what Libyan No, I know. Yeah. Maghrebi curry, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, so, sounds good, actually. Um, so there's you know, one occasion in which he's assaulting an officer, so he's being arrested for something. And apparently he spat in the officer's face and then referred to her as a slave in response to being arrested by a female. And yet my tweet with Jess Phillips was the only <laughs> thing that's brought up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, that's that. I mean, that's awful. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, this this guy is not messing around. And this was all known before the attack. This yeah. was him whilst he's just hanging out in the UK. So there's also the fact that when he was in prison in 2017, he was seen associating with a radical preacher, Omar Brooks, who was convicted on connections to a banned terrorist organization, al Mujarun. Right. So hanging out with a known uh, Islamist preacher. Mm -hmm. And this is something UK policy actually spoke about at the time, which is saying segregate those people out because yeah. they're just radicalizing the inmates. Yeah, yeah. Don't, and, don't put the radical imams in with the Muslim inmates because what do you think is going to happen? And the response at the time was, how can UKIP suggest this? This is irresponsible. Yeah. Well, because of things like this. No, it's, this, this keeps happening. A totally prudent policy. Yeah, he's not the first one. So I then wanted to go on to the police failures and all of this. So mm -hmm. the police have not been in great. So the, yeah. he, the, he briefly came to the attention of MI5 in 2019, but the information provided did not meet the threshold of an investigation. Now, I question this because it also says in 2019 they attained, obtained his phone. So they've got his phone, right? What do you think's on this well, guy's phone? pictures of him with the assault rifle. Yeah, so they say here that um, himself in Libya as a boy, images of him as a boy in Libya, holding firearms, wearing military fatigues, and showing off bullets arranged into the letter K. The K is his first name. Yeah. But that wouldn't. That's nothing, not a red flag. No, nothing suspicious. Like you wouldn't be like, okay, this doesn't guy... meet the criteria. Sorry, <laughs> don't know what to tell like you. How low are our criteria? Have we got too many people in cells? Is that it? It must be very strict. Yeah, well, apparently we do have to have too many people in cells. Yeah. There's so oh. many radicals in this country, but that's what it is. So in 2019, MI5 told Sala they might w that he might wish. Sorry, he told MI5 that he might wish to travel to Syria, uh, but after an assessment, he was discounted as a threat and therefore not investigated. So it's like, right, if you've got that stuff on your phone, he's telling you he wants to go to Syria, join the Islamic State. Not not worth investigating. Right. You know, I can't think of a worse police failure there. But it gets worse. The, the prison failures are also pretty bad. So he was in jail for one of those offences. I don't know which one. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned how did he get out. So he successfully applied to the Court of Appeal to reduce his prison sentence, meaning he was eventually released eight months earlier than expected. I don't know how he convinced them. Uh, maybe they were drinking cement. I, You tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had also applied for asylum twice at this point, both of which were refused. Following a judicial review in 2018, he was granted re uh, leave to remain for five years. So essentially, we now know he's a fake asylum seeker. He's obviously a radical. He's obviously some kind of terrorist in waiting. Need to get rid of him. Why wasn't he just instantly deported? So here's like, the Why thing. would he be here for five years? I saw, uh, I think it was leave.eu... Uh, yeah claiming that this was unjust, that he hadn't been deported. And I agree, mm -hmm. but the, there is... I can't blame Pretty Patel here. That's the thing I'm, I'm trying to... I, right. I mentioned I got in trouble for on Twitter. People were upset, which, you know, I, I can see why. But Pretty Patel actually wrote a letter to this guy. So two days before his release in June... Uh, sorry, two weeks before the attack, he was told in a letter from the Home Secretary that, he, that she had decided that your deportation is conducive to the public good. Mm -hmm. We want you out. Yeah. But it was not legally possible given the conditions in Libya. So Libya is still under a civil war, in which case, right. which side do you give him to? That's all. That's all. I, 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 Whichever side isn't for jihad, if there is one. Name one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, but the, there's one backed by the Russians. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But that's, that's where I'm like, okay, legally, I can't be mad at her. She has tried to do the right thing here, but legally she cannot act. Um, but it, 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 you know, it obviously kills you. She wanted to get rid of him. Couldn't be done. The, the correct thing to do, obviously, would be to just keep him in jail or to move him to Tunisia or a safe country in Africa mm -hmm. somewhere next door to Libya. But that's that's not what was done. So he was allowed to leave. They spoke to a fellow inmate, uh, Anthony Bloomfeld, who said that in the months before he was released, he openly threatened knife violence, discussed jihad, and said that he wanted to rape Britain. Pretty extreme. Yeah. You would have thought some more red flags here. This guy just shouldn't be let out. 
Just a few. Maybe the court got this wrong in reducing his sentence. No? Yep. Okay. So he was then re he returned. He went to Reddington's apartment and immediately started researching the park and purchased a knife. Okay. You can see what he's up to. Yeah. Like. Sorry, it irritates me. Um, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm getting quite irritated too. Yeah, so the night before the attack, local officers visited Salah after his brother, Arin, had rang the police and raised concerns about his mental health. So the brother, being a, a good man, I would say, in this response, called out the police and said, I think he's gone for a kind of nudge. Like, he's doing some weird stuff. Yeah. Um, you guys ought to go down there. Yeah. Apparently they sent a crisis team first. The crisis team knocked on the door, couldn't get a response, so they left, which I, I can't be angry at them. What else can they do, yeah? Yeah, the police turned up. He answered the door. And they've got the body-worn camera video, so we yeah. can see what went on, or at least it, it's in the court. Couldn't show you here. So it says from the from the body-worn camera video, two minutes of the encounter shows that Sala was reassuring the officers who had asked how he was feeling. Uh, whether they were asking how he was feeling and have he had enough food, and yeah. he reassured them. They said to him, "You're not in trouble. Uh, we're just here to check if you're all right." And all the while, the carrier bag containing the knife was visible on the floor behind Sala in his flat. Right. Okay. So they could see the knife in yeah. the in the video. Yeah. And the brother is quoted saying, I asked the police to detain him under the Mental Health Act because he was in no fit state to be left by himself. <clears throat> the correct thing to do, you would think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the brother seems to have done all of the right things here. Yeah. The, I know there were some uh, uh, suspicions about the brother, sure. rightfully. But, but I mean, he's he seems to have trying right to thing. get the police to arrest someone who he thinks is insane and going to go and kill someone. Yeah. And this was the day before he did. So he woke up the next day yeah. uh, and went out and did it. So... If we can get the uh, picture 13 up, just to show that. So this is the, the park itself. So this is one of my photos, just to show the place. Um, yep. And the next one, just to give you some context of the place it is. Like, here's the very famous Reading Lion statue mm -hmm. in memorial of, I can't remember which regiment, but the people who died in the wars. Sure. And it's it's a nice area. People go out, hang out, just drink. You know, this mm -hmm. could be any park in England. It's, yep. it's that kind of thing. Yeah. So the quotes from... Uh, uh, witnesses in the park witnessing this attack were that he was shouting Allahu Akbar and a Muslim bystander was able to translate one of his Arabic phrases he was shouting which was God accept my jihad and also victory for infidels victory for oh sorry inf victory on infidels oh right okay so explicitly jihadist language there we're not going to play this <laughs> this hide the sausage game where it's like <laughs> well it's just a murder investigator no no it's not I mean I would say so yeah but this, this, this went on. So, following his arrest, Salah initially said he wanted to plead guilty to the jihad that I just done. Okay, open and shut case. Why you should think? he be prevented from pleading guilty? But literally, just I've done the jihad. All right, come with us, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he told the police, "Those men I killed were wrongans. They deserved it. I'm going to, to paradise for the jihad, uh, for what I did to them." So. So did he know they were gay? You don't technically know from that statement because he said wrongans. Like, uh, but it that, could just be they're infidels. It, it is a strong it, indication. It, it, it could. But, but I, I get the feeling that he seems to be making... Maybe he did. But yeah. I don't have any evidence apart from that statement, which you right. can infer. But that's not solid evidence. So they then checked his phone after this arrest, and they also found images of the Twin Towers, the black flag of Islamic State, and videos with Jihadi John. Oh, good news. Great. Yeah. So you then go on to the court case. So he... he Immediately upon being arrested, was like, "Yep, yeah, I've done the jihad, guys. You know, I've done a good thing." And then when he realised, ah, "I'm actually going to go to jail, aren't I?" He started to pretend that he had emotional distress and he was actually mentally ill. Or oh, like this. oh, well, I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. Well. So this is the the judge talking that he he yeah. later feigned mental illness in police interviews, was emotionally unstable and an antisocial uh, person with antisocial personality disorder, mm -hmm. and his behaviour worsened by alcohol and can cannabis misuse. Now, they had a psychiatrist look him over, and the judge's response after reading the psychiatrist's report was that the defendant did not and does not have a major mental illness. So, no more hiding the sausage. Yeah. Like, you're just a jihadist. Let's not mess about with this. Yeah. And this is another thing. that The reason I wanted to cover this so much is it's flown completely under the radar. Yeah. You remember it happened, and then just... Well, the, the, only, the only coverage I've seen from it has actually been pink news uh, because three gay men were killed. And so they're like, ah, we, we, we feel personally a homophobic attacked. attack. Yeah, exactly. Which they're justified in complaining about. And which it seems to have been, yeah. But where is everyone else on this? Yeah. Because jihadist attacks, it's like the I don't give a damn. You know, jihadist caps just, just keep happening. They're part of British life. And yeah. I'm, I'm not having that. That's not right. So the judge also said that the defendant, uh, sorry, the, the defendant then after being shown that he was not mentally ill 
uh, pleaded guilty to three murders and three attempted murders. So the three guys he killed, yeah. two that he injured, and the third he chased after. But denied any terrorist motive. Like, are you stupid? You literally told us you committed a jihad. I mean, we're supposed to, what, take his word for it? <laughs> like, just utter ridiculous. Yeah. The ju- even the judge like was just like, no, I'm not having this. You clearly executed the men as an act of religious jihad. Yeah. Perfect statement. Yeah. Um, so he then goes on to say, for the he also did this for the purpose of advancing uh, political, religious, or ideological cause. You might think that sounds a bit wishy-washy, because he's obviously just say Islam. Like, yeah, yeah. That's why he did this. But that's the definition of terrorism, so he has to sure. use the, the definition. Yeah. But for the religious cause in question being the religious cause of Islam. Yep. And the political cause of Islamism, I guess. Yeah. So uh, the judge rejected uh, this and handed him a whole life order, meaning he will never be released from prison. So he's never, ever coming out. Great. That means it's our taxes paying for that. So yeah, here comes the debate about the death penalty or not. Yeah. Should, should you just... Because this guy, if, if he yeah. can't ever be trusted to be outside, I think this is sort of a subtle way that... A judge, this is a new thing for judges, whole life orders that we yeah. just say you're never coming out. Yeah. And it's a good step. Because it's there are better people than the now, alternative, I guess. But it's there's there's the interesting point of oh, this. Right, which is, staying, yeah. Thank you, John. This has only ever been applied to two other people in the UK. Yeah. The uh, one of the our uh, uh, Rigby murders. So that was a drummer who was marching down the street, not in uniform, just yeah, yeah, home, yeah. And two guys came out, beheaded him, and then yeah. stood around for thirty minutes to tell people that these verses in the Quran mean we can do this. Yeah. God knows what their motive was. You know, widely unknown, I'm sure. And then the second one was the murder of Joe Cox, where he shouted Britain's first, shot her in the head. Yeah. And then he's been given a whole life order as well. Right. But that seems to me just like, that's just a way of saying death sentence without we want to give the death sentence. Yeah. We want time to do the death sentence. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm not against the death sentence anymore. I used to be, obviously, like every uh, person who is left wing. But at this point, I'm saying, no, there are just some, some acts so egregious that I think that is justice. Because if justice is getting what you deserve, then... Uh, but it's also, what do we do with this guy? You know, he's murdered three people, you know, stabbed two others, clearly fanatical, clearly not going to change his mind. If we're so convinced... Well, I don't that, care if he changes his mind. Well, no, no, Let's assume on. tomorrow he's like, you know what, actually, I did something terrible. I've converted to Christianity. I'm, I'm going but to become that, a monk. No, I don't care. You murdered three people in cold blood. I understand. But if, if this was normal circumstances, you'd give him life, which is 18 years, I believe, in the UK, something like that. Yeah. But we're not even agreeing to that. We're agreeing that, no, 18 years isn't long enough. You will never be reasonable to be in public life. Yeah. So why should you be left alive? If we're convinced he's done it, we're convinced, you know, we have the video evidence, we're convinced that he can yeah, never be in public Yeah, the evidence isn't in doubt. In public nothing's ever going again. to come up that's going to show that he wasn't the guy who did it. Like, that's never going to happen. There is nothing that can come up that shows he didn't do it. So the, and, and all of left-wing arguments against the death penalty are always predicated on the idea, ah, but what if, what if, what if? Okay, we're not in a wife scenario. No, this is absolutely not what if, yeah. which is why he got the whole life order. We know yeah. you've done it. Yeah. You know, everyone knows you've done it. The you blood's know, literally over your chest. Yeah, right? and you, you haven't even denied it. You've been like, oh, actually, I'm mentally ill. Well, then <laughs> it's for everyone's safety if you sit in this chair. You know, I'm sorry. I'm. Yeah. I, I used to be anti death penalty as yeah, well. Yeah, I um, used to be. I used uh, to be. But I'm reading I'm sorry. terrorist case after terrorist case where we're just happy to put yeah. them in jail forever. Just you know, why, why waste my taxes? Fine. You know, why waste my taxes? But that's, that's for, what for, the, for the lowest of human beings, absolute scum. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. No.